Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Josh All alone with you today. Just want to do a quick midweek, you know, week three update. Talk about a couple things that we didn't get a chance to go over on the, the live show Monday night on Victory Monday after the big win in Jacksonville over the Jaguars on Sunday. And just talk about a couple things, a couple expectations that I have for the team and things to look for throughout the rest of this week as the team practices, you know, they kick off practice today. They'll practice tomorrow on Thursday, Friday, you know, and get ready for the the second home game of 2024 on Sunday against the New York Giants. And we will be doing a preview show tomorrow night on our Discord channel. So if you are a member of the Dog Pack, you are a part of the the private Discord channel. We will be doing a show tomorrow night. I believe it's 9 p.m. We'll be recording that with all of you guys in Discord, getting your questions, thoughts, takes on the Browns, everything on the show. And then we'll be releasing that episode to preview the New York Giants game on Friday. And if you want to be a part of the Dog Pack or the, you know, and the Discord and you're not already, we tell you all the time, head to jointhedogs.com, become an official Dog Pack member on the Patreon page. You can sync up your Patreon account then with the private Discord. We'll give you the link, get you in there and get everything settled, ready to go. We had, we had like, I think three people uh, in the last day or so come in and join the Dog Pack on Patreon and get synced up with the Discord. So just really excited to get to meet everybody, get to know you better. If you've been following the show for a while now, you see the interaction we have with the Dog Pack members. And I mean, we, we've got fantasy football leagues. We've got 24 seven discussions, conversations going on in the discord. And, you know, we just, we get to know everybody so well. We've got the dog pack meetup coming in November, November 3rd, I believe it's the night before the chargers game, whole bunch of dog pack members are going to the game. We're all getting together at the Browns backers bar in Berea. Uh, the night before we're going to have, you know, music and we're going to do some podcasting. There's going to be some Browns alumni there. It's going to be a ton of fun. So if you want to be a part of that community that we're building, and when I say we, I mean everybody who's involved in the dog pack is building this community to be something very special. Jointhedogs.com, become an official dog pack member. So one guy that I wanted to shout out, well, actually, I've got a couple here. The first guy, and we mentioned him Monday night, but I just wanted to reiterate how impressed I have been with linebacker Jordan Hicks so far through the season and yeah, you know, obviously put it out there early here. Everything I know it's only week two. I know we've only played two games, yada, yada, yada. But that's the the data and the information we have to go off of so far. And and so far, Jordan Hicks has looked great. He is I was really excited when the Browns signed him. Um, I liked Anthony Walker when he was here, but he was just always hurt. He was never on the field. And what he provided for the defense, I thought Jordan Hicks could provide that and more. And so far, we're seeing that. Sunday against the Jaguars, he had a sack, two quarterback hits, a tackle for loss, and two pass breakups in his pass coverage. So very good, very good outing for Jordan Hicks. Excited to see him throughout the duration of this season um, kind of being the spearhead of that, that defense in the middle there. And then we've got Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward is, man, I think as long as he stays healthy, that's always a big, big thing, especially with the concussions with Denzel. But there is a monster game coming. I don't know when it's going to be, but there's a big one coming for the Warden. And we've got three potential opportunities here for him coming up because we've got um, Daniel Jones on Sunday, who likes to turn the ball over. A lot. We've got Gardner Minshew the week after who has played very competent football in Las Vegas for the Raiders. So that game could be a sneaky. The Browns need to watch out and not get too ahead of themselves because I think that could be a trap game on the road in Las Vegas. But then we've got Jaden Daniels, another, you know, a a young rookie coming in or we're going to Washington to play them. But Denzel Ward has had his ball or I'm sorry, has had his hands on so many balls. <laughs> Man, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Denzel Ward has had his hands on so many passes so far in two games. I mean, he had three pass breakups in week one against the Cowboys against Dak Prescott, who's a very good quarterback. Two of those could have been picks if he had just held on. So 
Denzel Ward right there could have had two turnovers, and then he had one pass breakup in week two that could have been picked as well. It was right there for him. He just dropped it. So he starts coming down with some of these, and Denzel Ward is going to, I'm telling you guys, there is a monster game coming very soon for Denzel Ward. Martin Emerson also had a pick come in and out of his hands on Sunday. And and not just for Denzel Ward are the turnovers coming, but for this defense in general. The turnovers are coming. We are pressuring the quarterback at such a high rate, and we're being so effective about it. We are going to force fumbles. We are going to force bad throws, pick sixes, scoop and scores. There are things coming for this defense. We saw the safety from Alex Wright. We'll talk about that here in a second on Sunday against Trevor Lawrence. Good things are coming for this Browns defense. And when they do, that's when we're going to start seeing the Browns start putting up 20, 25, 30 points in these games. They're going to start winning by more than a score. It's coming for the Browns. We have started this season the way that, you know, obviously ideal would have been 2-0, and but after that horrendous loss in week one, you can't ask for a better start to the season than 1-1 one and one with the potential to win the next three and open up four and one in this first chunk of the season. So that's got to be the primary focus right now is just stack these wins, get these wins early, get ahead in the division. We've already got a leg up on Baltimore and Cincinnati. Baltimore has got to go play Dallas this week in Dallas. I mean, there's a real, there is a real outcome here where the Baltimore Ravens are 0 and three to start the season. We have got to take advantage of these opportunities and we got to start Sunday at home against the Giants. So another guy I wanted to shout out, man, Ronnie freaking Hickman gets the start for the injured Juan Thornhill. He went on IR last week with the calf injury. Ronnie Hickman, man, third highest graded defender for the Browns on Sunday per PFF. The Jaguars only threw at him twice. Hickman allowed zero catches. He had three tackles, one pass breakup. It is so good to see this coming from a, a second-year undrafted free agent from the Ohio State University. And I just, Andrew Barry's, his track record of getting these UDFAs who contribute and play meaningful snaps, and it's just so it's just so great to see. And, and the growth and development from Hickman, I mean, last year he got thrust into a starting role because of injuries to the secondary, and he held his own pretty well. He had some... You know, some lapses here and there, some moments where it was like, oh, okay, yeah, he's definitely a UDFA, but, uh, you know, still played very well, earned himself a spot on the team for the second year in a row. I don't think there was ever a question. Hickman was was making the roster as a UDFA in year two, and now we're seeing him in the starting lineup, and, you know, I you're going to see mistakes. You, you see mistakes from all these guys. You see miscommunications and blown coverages and bad reads and things like that. I mean, it's the NFL. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. He's going to make mistakes. For sure. He's going to get burnt probably once or twice here and there. But overall, what he is, what he can provide to the defense, being a UDFA, being the second stringer stepping in for the starter, you really can't ask for much better than what Hickman's giving you right now. So very impressed with his play. Okay, now maybe some not so great, exciting news, but definitely a conversation that we need to have. Uh, I don't believe we mentioned this at all on the Monday Night Live show. But we got to talk about Miles Garrett and we got to talk about Miles Garrett because there is an injury that he's dealing with and we have got to temper expectations as fans. It sucks to, to say, hey, this is the reigning D boys, probably the best player on our team. He's the leader of our defense. Like we, we need to lean on Miles, rely on Miles. The expectations need to be high for him. I'm telling you guys, as fans, you got to temper those a little bit because here's the situation. Miles Garrett has a foot injury that he's been dealing with. Came up last week at practice. I don't believe, if I read the reports correct, it did not stem from anything in the Cowboys game. I think it was just like a midweek practice type of situation. He missed practice. He practiced, I believe, on Wednesday. Missed practice on Thursday with the foot injury. Then logged, a, I believe, like a limited practice or something on Friday. Entered the weekend without an injury designation, which was good. But clearly the foot was bothering him on Sunday after the game. Garrett said his foot didn't feel great, quote unquote, but that he's going to continue to play through it. So this foot injury is something that we need to keep in the back of our minds when we're watching games and there's drives that Miles Garrett is on the sideline. Even in like critical situations or, or 
spots in the game where you're like, why, why is Miles not in the game? This is why this, this is what's going on right now. So I just want to make sure we're all up to speed and aware of this. Um, I, I put in my notes here on the drive where Alex Wright got that sack for the safety against Trevor Lawrence. We saw Miles Garrett like carried the left tackle all the way back through where Trevor Lawrence was, was dropping back. He had to step up and he stepped up right into that pressure of Alex Wright, took him down for the sack. Um, by the way, as I was going back and kind of rewatching some plays and things to put some notes together, I had to take a screenshot of that play because Miles Garrett gets full arm wrapped up, tackled yet again by that left tackle as he's pass rushing Trevor Lawrence. And I'm taking screenshots Anytime I see this, any any plays, any situations where I'm seeing Miles Garrett getting full wrap tackled by the offensive lineman, especially when it's right next to the quarterback. I'm taking screenshots of all those instances all season, all season. I'm not going to stop. And I'm posting them on X and I'm tagging NFL officiating and NFL commissioner Roger Dickhead Goodell. This is unacceptable. This is completely unacceptable, and I am sick and tired of watching it. Blake made a great point on the show the other night. It's it's like the NFL has come out with this mentality that, well, Miles Garrett's just too damn good. He's too damn fast. He's too damn powerful and strong and everything else. You can't call holding on him because otherwise you'd have to call it every play. That mentality is flawed, completely flawed. You would never do that on the other side of the ball for a guy like Justin Jefferson. Are you telling me the NFL would come out and say, look, Justin Jefferson is too damn good. He's too fast. He's too quick. He's too good of a route runner. We, we you just can't stop him. So we'll, we're not going to call any pass interference calls on Justin Jefferson. No, they would never do that. Never in a million years. So why are we doing it on the other side of the ball with a guy who's just as equally as good at his position on defense in Miles Garrett? This is bullshit and I'm sick and tired of it and I'm calling them out every chance I get. So if you follow us on X, every time I post something about this and I'm taking those idiots in the post, share it, retweet it, send it out to everybody. Let's get this stuff to go all over the place and put some pressure on these buffoons in the NFL thinking that this kind of shit is okay because it's not, this is not okay. Um, This is how people get hurt. Is how Miles going to hurt his shoulder again or something stupid because we're letting them full on tackle. I posted three instances just from Sunday that I saw where Miles Garrett got full tackled right next to Trevor Lawrence. It's not like this is happening on the other side of the play and they're rolling away and maybe the ref didn't see it. No, this is happening right next to Trevor Lawrence, right at his feet or right beyond him. These refs are watching the quarterback with freaking Hawkeyes and you, and you don't see Miles Garrett getting tackled right next to him. No bullshit. Don't, don't believe it. Don't buy it for one second. This is driving me nuts. So anyway, get off my soapbox about all that, but just help us out a little bit. We're trying to put a little pressure on these idiots. Um, So anyway, in the game against the Jaguars, uh, Miles did play limited snaps. He played just 68% of the snaps, which was down from 76% in week one. And I look back to 2023, Miles Garrett never really played below a 70% snap share in any game, except for the ones that were like big blowouts. Maybe he was down in like the 60% because they just didn't need him in the second half. And the Denver game was low, uh, which is the game in where he injured his shoulder because he got freaking tackled on a pass rush. So in terms of moving forward here, I, I don't expect Miles Garrett to really practice this week until again, probably Friday. Maybe he logs like a limited session on Friday. This, I I would imagine he's going to start popping up on the injury reports heading into the weekends with like a questionable tag. I'm he's going to keep playing through this foot injury, but you have to just taper back those expectations a little bit for miles. He is going to play less than what he normally would as he continues to deal with this injury. The thing like for the Browns medical staff and the coaches and everything, they don't want to, to force him out there more than they need to with this foot injury and risk it getting worse. If they can manage it, if they can manage the pain level, and they can manage the severity of the injury that he can continue to play on it, they're going to do that. But they don't want to overwork it to the point where they don't have him at all. So a limited miles sucks. It's not ideal, but it beats the hell out of no miles. And that's kind of the mentality I think the Browns are, are taking with their approach here. So 
the foot injury, this, this could linger for the majority of the season, guys. So just you know, keep an eye on this. Keep that in mind when you're watching games on Sundays. Again, like I said, if he's not out there in spots where you think he normally would be, that's why. But even on those limited snaps on Sunday, Miles Garrett managed to, to rack up three tackles, one sack, one forced fumble, a tackle for loss, and a quarterback hit. And that's all with getting tackled. I mean, he's flat out getting tackled on the field. And, you know, he's doing everything he can. And, uh, you know, got to appreciate that from, from one of your team leaders. Alex Wright, dude continues to show growth and development uh, from the defensive end position and you know, I just I would not be surprised to see his snaps continue to increase as Miles continues to decrease a little bit. I think Wright's going to spell Miles even more, and if he continues to show that he can be trusted like this on the field, I, there's there's no reason not to. If you can if you can take some of the pressure and burden off of Miles while he's dealing with a foot injury, because you've got a competent pass rusher that you can trust out there, and you know he's going to be where he needs to be and do what he needs to do. And Alex Wright, that's just. Just makes the Browns that much better of a team all around. So, especially on that defensive front where, you know, Dalvin Tomlinson had, you know, surgery before the season started. So, I mean, I know he's good to go right now, but you just never know him. We've already lost Marie Hurst. We don't have Michael Hall. We need guys to step up, and Alex Wright so far has been that guy. So, happy to see that. Hey, Dog Pack. Football season is the best time of the year. And it's here to stay until the Super Bowl in February. So get more out of football season with Underdog Fantasy and you can win 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing yards, receptions, whatever you want. I've been playing Underdog Fantasy for years now. If you've watched any of our fantasy talk before the season, you know I have like over 12 best ball leagues on Underdog here for 2024, but you could play contests all season long. The Underdog app is awesome. It's easy to use, and it's one of my personal favorites. Making picks on Underdog is simple, and signing up is even easier. Just download the Underdog mobile app or go to underdogfantasy.com, sign up using our promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick entry plus up to one thousand dollars in bonus cash when you deposit and you can also use our preferred fantasy sports link at signupexpert.com slash dogs to access this great offer on underdog and also see all the other offers available to you that's underdog fantasy promo code dogs d-a-w-g-s to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer must be 18 or older, 21 or older in Massachusetts and Arizona, 19 and over in Alabama and Nebraska and present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783 or text Next Step to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 Hope line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. This episode is brought to you by Bodden Sports. Browns fans, Bodden Sports is your one-stop shop for all your athletic gear. Bodden started out perfecting and manufacturing the best balls in the business. Yeah, if that sounded dirty, that's more about your mind than my words. But hey, it's true. Baseball, softballs, footballs, basketballs, volleyballs, soccer balls, you name it. And Bodden has engineered the highest standard sports balls available. And now they offer more than just sports balls. If you got kids playing baseball or softball, Bodden has batting gloves and bats to go along with both game balls and training balls. If you're into basketball, Bodden makes basketball specifically for indoor or outdoor use. Heck, Bodden even has all the equipment you need for pickleball, which is one sport that I hear everyone is playing and yet I still never have. And I need to fix that soon. But don't miss the backyard game section of Bodden's website where you can order everything you need for this upcoming outdoor season. Pool balls, backyard volleyball nets, croquet, bocce, horseshoes, cornhole, and more. Right now, you can get 10% off your entire order at Baden Sports, B-A-D-E-N Sports.com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S, and use promo code dogs when you check out. That's 10% off all the top quality sporting gear you need this season. Baden Sports.com slash dogs. So let's continue our discussion here on Amari Cooper, shall we? Um... You know, we talked about this Monday night. We talked about the stats. We talked about the air yards, like 243 total air yards. I think third most in the entire NFL so far through two weeks. He only has 27 actual yards. There are good things coming for Amari Cooper. Kind of like I talked about the defense. Like they are this close to getting those interceptions, getting those turnovers. Big things are coming for the defense. Amari Cooper is this close to having a phenomenal season to start so far. If he just catches a couple passes that he dropped, he has 
He has probably well over 100 yards and two touchdowns and looks like, you know, the, the top guy for the Browns. Unfortunately, he's dropped those passes. Once he starts making those catches, there are some big games coming for Amari Cooper. I keep saying it and I because I truly believe it. He is the Browns' number one target still. And I just wanted to talk a little bit more, though, about the situation surrounding Amari Cooper. So, you know, one thing that we saw, I mean, we saw it in week one in a limited fashion because that whole game was just a shit show. Week two, we saw a great connection between Deshaun Watson and Jerry Judy and Deshaun Watson and Elijah Moore. Like those guys all seem to be on the same page. They were connecting. Uh, they were catching their passes. Deshaun's hitting them in the right place, right time. All these kind of things. They're making plays together. Uh, Jerry Judy along the sideline, a couple spots where he just made some great catches on on some nice throws from Deshaun. And, and those are the type of playmaking things you need to see because not every play in the NFL is going to be okay. You drop back, first reads open, hit him, go. There, you got to improvise. You have got to be able to say, first read's not there, second read's not there. I'm getting pressure from this side. Like you saw with Deshaun, evade a tackle, roll out, run to the side, make a last second pass, you know, to Judy on the sideline where he drags his toes and just, those are the type of plays that make a good NFL offense. And it's great to, to be seeing those things. But why aren't we seeing them with Amari Cooper? Why do they seem to be more on the same page? Elijah, Judy, Watson, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, if, if you remember, and I, I just thought this was important to remind everybody, including myself, I had to, I had to sit down, think about it, go back and, and readjust my expectations for Amari Cooper. The dude didn't start practicing until at, like after a full week of training camp had already gone by. Remember, he was holding out and it wasn't until after he agreed to those contract terms with the Browns, they guaranteed his $20 million salary, gave him $5 million extra million for the season, all that kind of stuff. So he missed the first chunk of training camp. And then if you remember, he left the joint practices against Minnesota with an injury. So he didn't practice after that. And I, uh, I don't, be I believe he didn't practice in or participate in drills for pretty much the rest of training camp, unless I'm completely misremembering that, let me know. But if my memory serves me correctly, um, especially cause I know when we were up there at training camp and that was the last week, I believe of training camp when we went Amari was still off to the side catching passes, but he didn't participate in any team drills. He didn't run with any any of the team stuff, none of that. So, you know, he was very limited availability and all that kind of stuff in training camp. He didn't play in the preseason. And then think back to the other guys. Jerry Judy was on the practice field with Deshaun Watson day one of voluntary OTAs, if I remember correctly. He was there from the start back in May when the, I mean, it's voluntary OTAs. We talked about that with Deshaun Watson, like this dude, you know, cause every, all the haters want to talk about, Oh, he, he doesn't want to play football anymore. He's going to take every excuse he can to, to quit yada, 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 which is just not, not even close to true in any sense. So we're not even gonna talk anymore about that, but he was there day one of OTAs, voluntary OTAs when most vets elect not to come. And they opt out of those, those voluntary OTAs, which is fine, whatever. I mean, they're veterans, but Amari Cooper is one of those guys. He opted out. Elijah Moore opted out of session one, of session one. Session two, the following week, Elijah Moore was there. Voluntary OTAs, Elijah Moore, Jerry Judy, Deshaun Watson. They have been repping together, logging reps on the practice field since May. Jerry Judy had like the, the, injury that limited him during training camp, but he was still on the field when we were up there at training camp that last week of the, the summer, Jerry Judy was out there and we were, I mean, he was one of the guys that impressed me and Justin like, wow, man, this guy's route running is pretty damn good. Like he's open. He's making plays during practice. It's pretty cool to see live. You read the reports, you see the video clips and everything, but to see it live, it was like, okay, Jerry Judy, I think we got a guy here. So these guys have been practicing together for a while. They really have. And the, the rapport, the chemistry, the reps between Deshaun and Amari Cooper just haven't been there. They, neither of them played in the preseason. Just to mention again, Amari not really available much of training camp. And it has been Deshaun Watson and Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy from the beginning since May really getting these reps together this entire time. So it makes sense why early in the season to start here, they are on the same page with each other. Meanwhile, Deshaun and Amari 
are not. So I just think it's going to take a little bit of time. Hopefully these first two weeks, we're just kind of get back into sync between Amari and Deshaun. And we're going to start seeing those downfield connections start to hit. And when they do, man, Amari Cooper is going to have some big explosive games for the Browns. And I'm, I'm really excited to see it when it starts clicking. But in the meantime, it is good to see that Deshaun does have that rapport and he is on that same page with Judy and Moore and some of our other receivers while we wait for Cooper to get back. Got to remember David and Joku wasn't there either on Sunday. I thought Aikens did a decent job filling in for him. But, you know, we are with, with Amari Cooper being kind of slow out the gate and David and Joku not being available. We're down our top two playmakers in the receiving game early in the season. So once we get back up to speed with Amari, once David gets back on the field, I think we're going to see a lot more from this offense than what we've seen so far. So just some final quick notes that I wanted to go over uh, here in the middle of week, getting ready for week three. Um, Kevin Stefanski, we didn't mention this the other night, but he got his 20th win following a loss since he took over as the head coach for the Cleveland Browns. That is what you want to see from your head coach, your football team. What do you do? What does the team do? How do you respond after you get beat and that is 20 losses in Kevin Stefanski's, now he's in his fifth season with the Browns, 20 losses in his duration here that he has followed up with a win. So great job, Kevin. Love to see that. And it was his, um, oh, I'm sorry, it was his, what, fifth straight year of at least either being 2-0 and or 1-1. and So Kevin Stefanski has never gone 0-2 to start a season again. It's what you want to see from your head coach. It's the NFL. You look at the Ravens. I mean, they're 0-2 facing potentially. Now, they could obviously beat the Cowboys and be 1-2, whatever. But if they lose, they're going to start 0-3. You do not want to start 0-2 if you can avoid it. And so far, Kevin Stefanski has never started 0-2. Love to see it. The Browns defense averaged almost three touchdowns allowed per game on the road last season. We talked so much heading into the Jacksonville game how... We need the road defense to be improved from last year because last year it was not good. And on Sunday in Jacksonville, the Browns defense allowed just one touchdown, just 13 total points. Great start for the defense on the road in 2024. Hopefully that is a trend that continues. Now, as far as practice goes for this week, I'm going to be monitoring what Jack Conklin does during practice. I do not expect Jed Wills to play again on Sunday. So let's talk about Jed Wills just for a quick second here. One of the sports docs I follow closely on X, he has been speculating for the last week or so that, you know what, this whole Jed Wills thing is a little bit, it's a little, I don't want to say fishy because that's not really the right word. It's just a little bit interesting, I guess. I don't have a good word for it right now, guys, but all, all that to say, he's looking at the Jed Wills injury kind of the same way we have been saying, well, for what they reported his injury was last year and the surgery timeline and all that stuff, he, he really should be back. So he's speculating now that, the only real answer for this is that the initial injury last year when the surgery happened and all that kind of stuff was underreported, that the injury was actually more severe than what was ever reported to the public, meaning that potentially Jed Will's MCL injury last year could have been much worse, could have been like a full tear of the MCL that was never really reported and then was fixed and corrected during the surgery. And that could be why the recovery is taking longer than we feel it should be. So that's honestly the only theory that makes any sense. And for everybody out there screaming, oh, Jed Wills is just lazy. He just doesn't want to play, blah, blah. He's quitting on the team. Guys, Jed Wills is not benching himself because he doesn't want to play. This is his contract year. So the more time that Jed Wills misses in 2024, the more he's hurting his chance. I don't want to say he's hurting, but the more the situation is hurting his chances at getting a second you know, what they call the, the generational wealth type of contract in the NFL. He, he's, he wants that second contract. He wants a good extension or, you know, a good three-year deal with another team or whatever to, to get that nice big second contract that these guys covet in the NFL. So no, he's not doing this on purpose. He's not sitting out because he doesn't want to play. He's not weak. He's not soft. None of that stuff. I think that I think it was Deepak Jonah, uh, the, the sports doc. I'm just, I, I'm pretty sure it's who it was. I think his theory is probably the most logical at this point that, that the injury last year for Jed, the surgery, the repair, whatever the situation was, 
it was underreported. It was not, we, we didn't get the full details of what happened, what went on. And that is why the recovery is taking longer. Again, reiterate, it's not because Jed's soft. It's not because he doesn't want to be out there. The dude needs to be out there. I guarantee you he wants to be out there because he needs to get that second contract. So money talks. And I know that if Jed was physically able to be out there, he would be. So Conklin, though, being back on Sunday, that's a possibility. I would love to see Jack Conklin be at left tackle. It'd be great to get James Hudson out of the starting lineup. He gave up the most pressures once again on Sunday. And just looking ahead, we'll preview, obviously, the Giants later this week. But the Giants have Kevin Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence rushing the passer. So uh, upgrading from James Hudson to Jack Conklin, I know it would make me feel a lot better. I'm sure it would make all of you feel a lot better. We would just feel a lot better going into that game. The Giants logged uh, five sacks just this past week on Jaden Daniels. And I was just checking some quick metrics. Jaden Daniels' time to throw was 2.84, and he got sacked five times by the Giants. Deshaun was still over three seconds on his time to throw. So managing this pass rush against New York is going to be very important. And if we could manage it with Jack Conklin and not James Hudson, that would obviously be much more ideal. So those are just some quick notes, quick hitters, thoughts, and and you know updates heading into week three against the New York Giants. We will be back later this week. Uh, it, well, tomorrow night, if you're part of the Discord, we will be live in Discord at 9 p.m. You guys can jump on the stage you know, get up there, ask your questions, give us your takes on, you know, last week's game on the upcoming Giants game. We're going to be previewing the Giants, all that fun stuff. Those episodes seem to be going over very well. We're having a ton of fun interacting with all you guys and talking and getting your thoughts and opinions on the show. And if you want, again, to be a part of the Discord shows, which we seem to be doing, we don't have a hard schedule in place, but right now they seem to be like Thursday nights at nine o'clock on the Discord. Head to jointhedogs.com, become an official Dog Pack member on the Patreon, sync up Patreon with the Discord, and you know we'll make sure you get in there and get everything you need to have access to all the channels. We have so many channels in there where guys are in there having conversations about all kinds of things. I say guys, guys and gals. We've got some awesome Dog Pack women in there that, I mean, the, the diehard Browns community on Patreon, in the Discord is phenomenal. You guys and gals rock. So keep up the great work. Join us tomorrow night if you're in the or if you're in the dog pack, 9 p.m. in the Discord. Preview the Giants. That episode will be out Friday. So you guys can catch that if you're not part of the Patreon. We're coming to you Friday with a preview for the Giants game. It's going to be a great weekend. The Browns have a great opportunity to improve to 2-1 and one on the season. Obviously, you can't take any NFL team lately, but the Giants kind of suck overall. So if we can just limit the mistakes, again, manage their pass rush on defense, all that kind of stuff, I think the Browns can get out of there with a relatively easy win in NFL terms. But again, you can't take them lightly. We'll talk about it all on the preview show. So until I see you guys in that one, let's go Brownies. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Danger Coffee. Browns fans, we talk about how Danger Coffee is made free from mold toxins that are in 45% of the world's coffee, but that's not all that Danger Coffee has to offer. Mineral and nutrient deficiencies are a big deal. They make you feel sick, tired, stressed, and they can give you brain fog. These deficiencies negatively affect your immune system, your digestion, sleep, metabolism. Have you ever wondered why you get an initial burst from your coffee? But then you get that little crash not long after danger coffee's patent pending process remineralizes your body with more than 50 trace minerals and electrolytes, leaving you more energized, engaged, powerful. These micronutrients enter the cells to boost performance. They bind to toxins to provide detoxification support. I know that sounds like a lot, but the bottom line, guys, is minerals matter. And most of us really don't get enough of them on a daily basis. Danger Coffee delivers micronutrients, plus it gives you access to the minerals you already have. 
Head to DangerCoffee.com, use our code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, for 10% off your order. And that code can be used over and over, so you get 10% off every order you make using code DOGS. It's time to start every day off with a cup of coffee that gets you going and actually keeps you going. DangerCoffee.com, code DOGS.